On this episode of Project Stealth Mode, the stealth is thirsty, so we better give it some fluids. Who writes this material? Welcome back to the Auto Obsessive Garage. Chadwick with you again for another installment of Project Stealth Mode. Now, who doesn't want to spend some time under their car getting covered with various types of fluids? No one in their right mind is the correct answer. So we're gonna get under there today. We're gonna to start with taking care of the obvious fluid, a nice old oil change. Then we're gonna move on to the transfer case, transmission, and rear differential. I'll walk you guys through what I'm choosing for fluids and my theory behind it, or my reasoning behind choosing said fluid. There are a lot of opinions out there on what fluid to use and what section of the drivetrain. My research and past history has led me to use what I'm gonna use, but feel free to judge, it's perfectly okay. So that's pretty much it. It's a fluid replacing kind of episode inside the Auto Obsessive Garage today. Let's get in there and get some work done, shall we? Let's go ahead and remove this front valve cover gasket. The rear one is perfectly dry. This one's leaking. It is a new gasket. The previous owner said he did it early last year, so eh, technically it's getting to be almost two years old, but sometimes I've had new gaskets leak too, and this one's leaking quite a bit. Again, inspected around the back, perfectly dry back there, so we're just gonna replace this one. Fortunate for us is the easy one to get to. So all you need for this job is a 10 millimeter socket and then a 14 millimeter wrench to get the PCV hose off. And there's a couple other hoses you gotta disconnect. Upper time belt cover comes off too. So we'll remove that. We'll remove the spark plug wire covers. Let's get to work. Always a good sign when you don't have oil pulled up in here. Pull these plugs out of the way. You know what? A source of this leak could be, these weren't even finger tightened in, these middle ones. These ones are super loose too. Maybe they just didn't torque everything down correctly. Cause these are super loose. Yes, you're not supposed to really put a lot of torque into these, but I mean, I'm not even, yeah. These aren't even tightened. I think that's the cause of the valve cover leak. How funny is that? Oh boy. You know, people that do their own work do make mistakes like that from time to time. It looks like the previous owner just failed to tighten these to spec. Thank goodness he didn't do that on the rear valve cover. I might stick a wrench in there just to find out actually. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay, those are definitely tightened. Whew. All right, well that's easy enough. Let's just loosen these up. Wow. So like I was saying earlier, you don't need to put a lot of torque on these valve covers, but you gotta put enough. You gotta target the spec so at least it's pressing down on that gasket. If not, yeah, these, were, these weren't even finger tightened in the middle. You will have leaks, I promise you. Because gaskets, even over the course of like a year or a few heat cycles, they deform a little bit, as anything would. But boy, you gotta tighten these things down. That's silly. Oh, that's an easy, easy fix. We'll put a new gasket in still and tighten it to spec. Something else alarming about this valve cover job is there is seriously no gasket maker or any kind of silicon around the crescents, which is always a thing you need to do. Now I can see where there was some historically, but it looks like they cleaned it off and then just slapped this new one on. That's incredible. That's gonna cause leaks in and of itself, not to mention that everything wasn't tightened down, so. Jeez, guys, yeah. 
I'm gonna put that in obviously the right spots, especially with these Mitsubishis, you gotta put it in these spots. And especially when the valve cover is angled to the front like it is in this V6 configuration. Boy, oh boy. All right, let's undo these mistakes and get it all back together. Nice and leak proof. Time to place our new valve cover on. Before we do that, make sure your mating surface is cleaned. Go ahead and get some RTV ready. The places you wanna hit are these little corner areas where the cam caps come down and you wanna put a little bit over, just a little bit on top, hit the corners hard. Those are places that tend to leak, so you definitely wanna hit those. Of course, make sure your gasket is seated inside your valve cover. All right, doing the oil change on the Stealth Twin Turbo. What you're gonna need is four and a half quarts. The capacity is a little higher than that, but get yourself a good 10W30 oil. Get yourself a good quality oil filter. For tools, you're gonna need a 17 millimeter socket and something to remove the old oil filter. I love this claw tool. I've removed some of the most stuck on oil filters with this thing. It just goes on the end of a 3 8 inch ratchet and it really can remove just about anything. Let's get that oil out of there. Here's our transfer case right here, approaching from the front of the car. That's gonna be the fill bolt right there in the front. And then there's our drain bolt right there. Now let's go ahead and take these bolts off. Always remove the fill bolt first just to make sure you can get it off. There's no use draining it and then having a vehicle that you can't refill. So we'll do that and then we'll go ahead and drain the transfer case. For filling the transfer case, I'm gonna be using heavy shockproof gear oil by Redline. I've had great luck with this product. I'm gonna put that in there. It should be perfect for this transfer case. So I'm just gonna rig up my pump here. Go ahead, put that in the bottle and go ahead and fill the transfer case that way. Time to do the transmission fluid. I'm gonna be using a 50-50 combination of MT90 mixed with MTL. And that's a pretty good combination, tried and true for this transmission. Again, stick with your 17 millimeter socket. Pretty cool, it's right in the passenger wheel well. 
So once you have that tire off, this makes life a lot easier for you. You can see it right there behind the wheel well liner there. Fill plug. Ignore that hose for right now. You can see it right here. Now this hose is coming down from my engine compartment and that's gonna be attached to this funnel. So I'm actually gonna fill the transmission from up here, which is so much easier than using a pump. Transmission fluid flows pretty good, so it should be pretty easy. Straight shot right down in the transmission. Stop when it starts to overfill. Last but not least, let's do the rear diff. We'll be putting Redline 75W90 gear oil in there. It's recommended, lots of good reviews. So that's what we're gonna feed it. Here it is, nice and crusty right there. A little hard to see it. It looks like the paint is flaking off. That's actually not, you're not seeing like grease or anything like that. That's actually just coating is peeling off. So here at the rear diff, here's the important one. Here's the drain one. And the tricky part is the fill one, which is located right here. And you can't even see me touching, there you go. Right here. So what's hard to get to is the cross tube here for the exhaust that goes right in front of it. So I'm gonna play around. You might need some different sized sockets to reach it. We'll, we'll play around, we'll get that taken care of. It's 24 millimeter also. Let's get that fluid out of here. So I've got my fluid ready to go in. Rigging my pump up right now. Another thing guys, make sure you thoroughly clean all your pumps out and use different lines for different fluid. You do not want to be using you know, the wrong fluid, the wrong application. No crossing your gear oil with your transmission oil with your shock proof or whatever. So let's go ahead and... Sorry, this is not the most compelling visual, guys, but you should be able to see it when it starts to overfill and drip down, hopefully. Okay, make sure the fill hole stays in there. And I think we're ready to start pumping, guys. Such a nice pump, it works so well. Let's get back and show you guys what I'm doing here. Here we go. Nice and steady, you don't want to force it too hard through there. And once that diff starts to spill out the fill hole, we'll go ahead and seal her up. There we go. Oh, like she's ripping a big old fart. And there we have it. The rear diff is done. We've replaced all the drive line fluids. Transfer case, transmission, and rear diff. Job well done.